now being in the Philippines here and sunny day, it's hot. I do have to have the fan on. I hope it doesn't make too much of a problem for the sound. I'll try and clean it up later. Anyway, I want to talk today a little bit about nomenclature uh, because I was chatting to someone, one of the viewers, uh, a trans woman, and she said she didn't like the term HSTS, homosexual, transsexual, although that's what she is. Because she didn't like the term homosexual. She doesn't see herself as homosexual. She says, I've always been a girl. I like men the way that other girls like men. She's married. She's a long-term partner. She says, I'm a completely conventional woman. I'm a conventional wife to a conventional guy. So why should I have the name homosexual? And it's a fair point. I think I have to say that when these names were being made up, some of the people involved were... <laughs> A little bit mechanistic, not to say downright rude, but never mind. The point of the HSTS is that it, just to explain why we use this term first, and then maybe we'll talk about what we could do about it, is that these individuals are same-sex attracted from childhood, from like two years old, uh, two or three years old. As soon as they start having crushes, actual serious crushes, which are romantic rather than erotic, these will be, if they're boys, these will be on men, if they're girls, that will be on other girls. And these start happening in the classic age range when all children start having crushes, you know, five to seven years old. That's when they begin and they continue. Um, these people have never had the idea of being themselves like the objects of their desire. They see themselves as the opposite. They see themselves as girls. And so they're attracted to men. Um, and so when somebody says to them, well, you're homosexual, well... They don't really get that. What they are, actually, is sexually inverted. And this is a term that the, the new gay man has done you know, a tremendous amount of work to try to discredit without any success whatsoever. Uh, you have to understand that we now have literally thousands of studies that show that a hormone variation in utero and during pregnancy and around the time of birth and just after birth dramatically affect, in fact, define adult homosexual, adult sexuality and therefore gender. So we have thousands of studies saying this now. We have thousands of studies saying effectively that this inversion is innate and we can prove it. And so how could it possibly be that sexual inversion didn't exist when we can prove it exists? So you have to understand that within the uh, the queer lobby, there are some extremely bad actors. Um, and the, the whole group of them, you know, the, the new gay man, feminists, they, they, they cherry-pick the science. They don't want to hear that which they don't want to hear. Simple as that. So they have tried to, to destroy this idea of sexual inversion, which is what happens when a person born male has female sexuality. And pers or a person born female has male sexuality. Now, Freud defined these sexualities. He said, male is active, female is passive. Um, I'm not sure I like the word passive here, but what he meant was that male is the desire to penetrate uh, and the revulsion for being penetrated, therefore, and female is the desire to be penetrated. And, of course, without help, women can't penetrate. So... Sex normative is to have males with male sexuality. Some people don't have this. And this is caused by a thing that we call sexual inversion. And sexual inversion, like all other biological phenomena, uh, exists on a scale of variation. Some people are completely inverted. Okay, Some people are less so. It's that simple. Bisexuals are just a little bit inverted. So they kind of are able to, to, to move between the two. But actually, they're quite rare. Far more commonly are people who are completely or almost completely inverted. And you see them all over the time. The most of the, the, the feminine gays, feminine homosexual males in the, in the new gay man cult, are all actually sexual inverts. And I really don't care what they have to say about it. They, they just produce all this nonsense. They are girls inside, and it's as simple as that. So when someone who has transitioned, who has gone all the way, who's taken this to its logical conclusion, that is, they've gone, okay, I'm obviously not a guy, right? Because I have these feelings and I have this identification as a member of the opposite sex. Then obviously I can't be a guy. 
So how could I be homosexual for wanting to have sex with a member of someone who happens to be the same sex as I was born as? Because me, I'm inverted. So it becomes heterogender or heteronormative. The difference is that people like this because gender always follows sexuality. These people have fem female sexuality, so they want to have feminine gender. And that's, it's, it's as simple as that. That's really the root of transsexualism. That's all it is. Uh, in this n simple, neat form, which is, we're discussing what we should call. And I think we've answered the question. I think we should just call it transsexualism. I mean, in the past I've said, well, it's true transsexualism. Um, and it is, it is true transsexualism. You know, if you look at the non-homosexual transitioners, that is the ones who want to appear to be women, but they're not homosexual, and not attracted to men, um, some of them become attracted to men as a result of transitioning and they do this for affirmation these are called pseudo bisexuals it's not what we, we discussed that in the past we didn't go into here so we need to look at this and say well these are just not the same you know and, and they often sadly very sadly because of the efforts of, of medical professionals who I'm afraid particularly Americans I mean, they're literalists to the point of the, the, the dense sometimes. They've basically said, well, if you have a sex change operation, sorry, you, there's no such thing as a sex change operation. If you had GRS, gen genital reconstruction surgery, to change your genitalia so that it more represents or looks like or more resembles that of the opposite sex, then that's a transsexual. But that makes no sense at all. I mean, that define, makes a definition between a person who the day before surgery is not transsexual, but the day after surgery is. It all depend, makes it dependent on a completely cosmetic surgery. I mean, GRS doesn't make a, a, a person any more than a, of a woman. It just makes her look a little bit more like a woman. And it's not really a fundamental thing at all. It's a cosmetic surgery. So I don't think you can use that as the basis. And the second thing I would say about this group, and they are, remember, these are the autogynophiles, the non-homosexual male to feminine transitioners, is that in the West, now it's not the same in Asia, but in the West, probably for cultural reasons, about 80% of them, on the studies we have, this might be changing a little bit, but on the, the, the figures we have, around about 80% of them are actually androphobic. They can't stand um, being in the presence of men. They can't stand men touching them. They can't stand having sex with men. Now, the, the, how can someone who claims to be, who is male but who claims to be a woman, and yet who describes any man who is attracted to her as a freak and as a, a pervert and is thoroughly offensive to these men and has no interest in, in sex with them at all, how, how is that person transsexual? She doesn't want to have sex with men. She's just a transitioner. It's just cosmetic. Now, we've discussed what goes on in the autogynophilic mind at length. We will do it again if we have to. But the point is, there's no such thing as an, a non-homosexual transsexual. They don't exist. It's an, a completely false nomenclature. They're actually non-homosexual transitioners. And so I think we're ending up with saying that transsexuals are what Blanchard called HSTS. Uh, what have sometimes been called trans kids. The problem is that trans kids is not really well understood, or former trans kids. I mean, what does that mean? Unless you really understand the whole etiology of how someone comes to be like that, um, it's very difficult. We could just call them, uh, if you like, completed male inverts, but my goodness, that's really getting a bit long-winded when we could just say they're transsexual. That's what they are. So to my correspondent, um, I'll try very hard not to call you homosexual transsexual in the future. I tend to use HSTS because it's well understood uh, I'm in this, within the science, you know, and within the community of people who study this, it's well understood. But for those who are affected by it, uh, it would be just fairer, I think, just to call you transsexual and have done with it. <laughs> Cause, but when people must understand that when I say transsexual, I do not mean Caitlyn Jenner.